I want to call the uh, Committee on uh, Agriculture and Environment and Higher Education jointly to order. We are in room 224. It is 1.33 p.m. and uh, today is March 23rd, 2022. Our meet, this meeting is being streamed live on YouTube and we'll cover the 1.30 HRE and um, agriculture and environment hearing. Testifiers will be limited to two minutes each. If there are temporary glitches, uh, technical glitches during your turn to testify via Zoom, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. We do appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee does have your te written testimony. I'll be reading a list of individuals who submit a written testimony for each measure. We apologize if the closed captioning does not accurately transcribe the names. And if you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, you can go to the legislature's website and you'll find a link on the status page for the measure. In the unlikely event, we have to abruptly end this decision-making due to technical difficulties. The committee is hearing. The committee uh, will reconvene later today at 3 p.m. in room 211 and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. okay, with that. I uh, introduce my committee members, um, myself as chair, my vice chair is Senator Michelle Kidani. Uh, let's see, that's it for my committee. I'm sure we'll be joined. Oh, I didn't see Senator um, Gil Keith Agarang and Senator Favela may be on his way. And I'm not sure. <laughs> He's next door. Okay, he'll be back coming in. And I will turn it over to the chair on agriculture. And Mike, Mike Gabbard, chairing the AEN committee. My wife's chair is Senator Ishihara. And also my other members are Senator Rose, Senator Acosta, Senator Fidel. Okay. Uh, our first item on the agenda is House Bill 1711, House Draft 2. This relates uh, to the University of Hawaii appropriates funds to the University of Hawaii to support three additional positions at the College of Tropical Ag and Human Resources, uh, Kauai Research and Extension Station. We have testifying a uh, Department of Agriculture. Someone from the Department of Agriculture in person testifying? Nobody's here. Uh, Nick, Zoom? Are you on Zoom? Yeah, I cannot see. No, that's the next one. Okay. Um, so, Nicholas Com Com Comerford? Yes, ma'am. Um, University of White. Good afternoon, chairs, good vice afternoon. chairs, and, and committee members. Uh, Nick Comerford, I'm the dean of the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. Uh, we will stand on our written testimony in support, and I am available for questions. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Craig Hirai from the Department of Budget and Finance have comments. Brian Miyamoto. Hi, Brian. Welcome. Good afternoon, Chair Kim, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Kidani, Vice Chair Nishihara, and members of the committees. I'm Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, you have a written testimony in front of you. We support this measure. Um, the Kauai Research and Extension Station plays a critical role in supporting our farmers on Kauai, uh, as all the research stations and all the extension service does. Um, they, they lost some positions, and uh, we're asking for some positions uh, for the Kauai farmers and ranchers. Uh, one in particular is a livestock extension position, but they lost, I think, over a year ago. And again, if we are going to meet our double food production goals and some of the other agricultural goals that the legislature is setting. Uh, we do need these uh, critical positions to support the farmers and ranchers on Kauai. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to testify. We appreciate you hearing these many bills that are in support of our farmers and ranchers across the state. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. You sit there because I do have questions, but let me go through the list. Uh, we do have 11 that have sent in written uh, su in support, 11 testimonies. And if there's anyone else here that's wishing to testify on this measure or anybody on Zoom, um, do we have someone who's online? I'm not sure. Is there someone online that's willing to testify? Well, so for for uh, Department of Agriculture, sorry, we were going to appear in person, but uh, uh, things That's got okay. Up. Please go ahead. 
Yes. Uh, so the uh, Morris Alta, Deputy for the Department of Agriculture, we will stand on our testimony uh, supporting the intent, but defer to the, the CTAR and University of Hawaii on, on this measure. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you very, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to testify? Okay, we are open for questions. Um, Brian, just a quick question. So you mentioned that they lost positions. When, what do you mean when they said Kauai lost positions or the oh. department lost positions? On our testimony, it does specify that the latest freezing and sweeping positions, they did have five full-time staff and now they're down to only two. And then the livestock uh, extension agent, uh, I mm -hmm. believe returned to the mainland. Okay, um, so is it vacancies or they actually the position was, the position is gone? Uh, I think maybe the dean might be able to answer a lot better. We were just told by our, our Kauai farmers and ranchers that those positions were either frozen or swept, and now they're down from five to two. Okay, so um, Nicholas, is that positions have been swept or are they just vacant? Well, um, Senator, what happened with the budget cuts, they have not been refilled yet. Um, they're, they're swept at the university level. Um, and, and so we're waiting to see, I think, what happens with the budget this year to see what direction the university will be going to, to replace positions. So the position number, I believe, is still there, but there is no money to fill it at this point. Okay, so I guess I'm a little confused. We are creating a, three additional positions with funding, or we're we just going to be funding the existing positions? Uh, Senator, in that case, I, I really don't know. We were we never have much input into these bills when they go in, so I don't know the intent. What's happened in the past, this one, the livestock position was one of the 10 positions in the 2018 budget that were new positions that were uh, provided to the uh, to the college in, in that respect. So um, my, I really don't know on that case. I can find out for you and get back to you if you wish. Okay, thank you. I, we will probably write in the committee report and have the Committee on Ways and Means um, yeah, look into this and they will probably decide if whether it's just putting money for existing positions or whether it's actually having to create new positions. Okay, members, any other questions? Any other testifiers? If not, Brian, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay, if there are no other questions, we will move on to House Bill 1717, House Draft 1, relating to agriculture, uh, again, appropriate funds to the University of Hawaii to establish a foreign agriculture small equipment pilot program requires a report to the legislature. Again, we have Department of Agriculture. Are you still here, Morris? I am. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, once again, the Department will stand on its written testimony uh, in support of the intent and deferring to the uh, CITAR University of Hawaii Thank you. Available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Nicholas Comerford. Yes, ma'am. Um, again, uh, Dean of CTAR. We, we, we recognize the importance of this, but we have a, a lot of concerns about the details. It's a huge amount of work that is at least multi-year in, in, in scope. It doesn't, uh, we don't have people on staff that actually do this kind of work. And uh, our recommendation would be, if you wanna go this direction, why don't we for the first year do a survey about what's out there, what's required for EPA to import this material and who is going to do the, uh, the work in terms of making this equipment um, inconsistent with EPA import. Thank you, I'm available for questions. Okay, uh, Brian, Miyamoto. Thank you, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committee, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Now, the Hawaii Farm Bureau supports this measure. Um, we were part of a group that went up to Japan several years ago on an ag visit to Hokkaido, and I think that's where this uh, idea came from. Uh, we saw a lot of equipment that the farmers were using that were scalable to Hawaii, a little bit small farmers. A lot of the farm equipment from the continent is for large farm operations. And we believe there's some efficiencies with the small farm equipment that we could utilize to help our farmers be more efficient and grow our operations from small to maybe medium farmers. A majority of our farmers here in Hawaii, uh, out of the 7,300, nearly 80% are under $25,000 in revenue. 
in income. So we do have a lot of small farmers, but one of the challenges that we understood was the engines that were used in Japan and other countries may not meet the EPA standards. So there, there was a roadblock in trying to get the equipment here. And that's the purpose of this measure is trying to get the equipment here, identify what's needed, what's available, get it here, do some training, and then ultimately get it out to the farmer so they can be a little bit more efficient and scalable in, in the equipment that they need to use for our particular operations here in Hawaii. So thank you for this opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, Craig Kirai with comments of David R. Cowan support. We have a number of one, two, three, about 15 people in support written comments. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? If not, we are open to questions. I guess I have a question. Um, Brian again, please. So Brian, this appropriates the funds to the University of Hawaii to establish this equipment pilot project. Yet we heard from CTAR um, that they have some concerns and, and who's going to be doing this. So I guess I'm not clear as to, you know, it's one thing to, to pass a measure, but another thing to actually put it into operation. Yes, thank, thank you, Chair. And we do understand it. It's a very comprehensive request. Um, we do agree uh, with the Dean that maybe a study or a survey, first of all, as a first step. Um, we're not sure what the total cost is, but again, it's an opportunity that we'd like to see. Um, we'd like to keep up with technology and again, support our small farmers. So um, with your consideration, Chair, maybe a survey to start might be the first step. And then from there, we can continue on and hopefully get to the point where the, the end result was what we want with the farmers having that equipment here in, in Hawaii. Uh, we've, we've also um, communicated with our congressional delegation and we've tried to get some assistance uh, with the, the question on the EPA emission standards. Again, our hope is to get equipment here to Hawaii for our farmers to utilize that may be more appropriate for some of the operations that we see here in Hawaii. But we do agree with, with the Dean, uh, very complex, and uh, maybe a survey might be the uh, first step that if the legislature uh, so desires. So who, who would be doing the study or the survey? We would still request the university again, uh, as we advocate for the extension service, they have uh, the direct connection with the farmers and ranchers. They're out on the farms and they have the connection. Uh, Chair, we would be more than willing to, to assist, uh, to participate in any level that the legislature seems, uh, deems appropriate, um, but we would still request that the university as the appropriate uh, agency be the one to take the lead. Okay, so Dean Comerford, is that something that you folks can do? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, that, that's an area that we're probably uh, pretty appropriately um, useful for. Uh, when I say a survey, what we have to do is we have to find out what equipment people want, for one. We have to find out where that equipment is. We have to find out what the cost of that equipment is. We have to find out what is the EPA standards by which that equipment could be adjusted and brought into the country. And then we have to find out somebody to actually do that kind of adjustment either outside the country or in one of these uh, free zones along the airport. Uh, there's a lot of planning that has to go into this. Our extension folks had, uh, I think maybe had traveled with you, Brian, I'm not sure or not, but they also had, had contacts in Japan. Um, and one of the recommendations they made to me when I was talking to them about this is the first thing you've got to do is maybe hire an interpreter, somebody that can help you um, accurately identify what the situation is with this equipment in another country. So, so Chair, yes, the University of Hawaii, CTAR was part of that. So was the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Education um, in that, that particular ag visit. Okay. Members questions? Well, my question is, we, I don't think we need the build for them to, to do the study. So is that correct, uh, Dean Comerford? You don't need this bill to do your study. Um, I would think uh, some help in terms of personnel. Uh, as the previous bill notion, we're, we're down 20, 25% faculty and staff. Uh, our extension agents are doing an outstanding job 
but are fully employed at this point. So trying to get some help in terms of uh, assistance for our agents in, in doing some of this. That could be something as simple as, as hiring a, a, a firm that would uh, front for us if that's the case, or having a couple extra people that could uh, take some of the pressure off the, the agents that are involved in this. So there's a couple options if we do it on a survey basis. Okay, let me, let me just follow up then. When you say that you need help, is it because you have vacancies, you have positions that have been frozen, or is it just that everything's filled and you're just overwhelmed because you just cannot handle everything? With the... Yeah, Senator, the, the situation right now is uh, like many of, of the other colleges on campus, uh, we have had a lot of retirements and we've had some resignations over the last two years during COVID and the ability to replace those positions uh, just hasn't been there because of budget. It's been a very tight budget. So we are down in actual people. Uh, our extension still has functioned quite, quite well given the resources we have, but we have not been able to do the level of work that, that has been requested of us by clientele throughout the state. As an example, we have direct and indirect contacts of about one and a half million people throughout the state during the year. We provide 700 workshops during the year, um, we have, a, well, I could, actually I could provide you a short uh, thing of statistics. I can send that to you later. But the extension's done an outstanding job, but simply doesn't have enough people to meet the needs of the state at this point. And so putting another large project like this uh, would make it very difficult to get it done in a year's time without, temp I'm just talking temporary help in this case, not necessarily hiring another agent to do it, but maybe hiring some, uh, some temporary help to work with the agents so that they can, um, they, can, they can organize their time much more efficiently. I, I understand efficient. what you're saying, I think, but the question on filling positions and getting bodies is a problem all around. Um, so a lot of the private businesses as well are having a hard time. So you know, we can go ahead and put in positions and put in money, but if the university can't find the people to do the work, then we have to look at the workload uh, situation as well. So thank you for that. Members, any further questions? I don't have a question. I just have a comment yes. that I don't see the need to hire people to do this study. I think if they want to hire, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if we have a consulting firm that knows anything about farming or farmers or whatever. Or graduate students? Or yeah, I, I just say, I think the first step is to get the small farmers together who you know, have use for this equipment and whether or not they would use the equipment. And I just think that's just a couple meetings and I don't see having to hire someone to so do So Brian, that. you need to pull your farmers together and have a more um, um, report or some kind of a plan of what's needed and what it is that the farmers would like to see done. I mean, that's the first step, right? Yes. and. and it, Thank you, Chair. Yes, um, and again, we would we would contribute and participate uh, with our membership, and not just with the Farm Bureau membership, but farmers across the state. And we would do work collaboratively with the Department of Agriculture and the College of Tropical Agriculture. And we thought, uh, upon our return, that that we were going to pursue this, and it looked like there might be some funding. I agree. There, there is some work that needs to be done. Uh, Farm Bureau again stands by to, to assist in whatever ways that we can to help defer some of the costs as far as in-kind contributions. Um, but we believe that the scope was probably a little bit more than what we could manage ourselves. And that's where we thought that the university and CTAR specifically with the extension service and extension agents was uh, the appropriate direction to go. And that could help really accomplish this goal. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, members? Hearing none, thank you very much. Okay, we will move on to the next item, House Bill 1844, House Draft 2, uh, appropriates funds to the University of Hawaii for the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources to establish one full-time agriculture education coordinator position. Um, again, Department of Agriculture, Morris. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chairs. Um, again, the department will stand on a certain testimony supporting the intent and deferring to the University of Hawaii, uh, CTAR. Thank you. Okay, Dean Comerford. 
Yeah, Senator, I apologize to the committee. This seems like this is my hearing for just CTAR, and, and I know you're all doing a lot of work on our behalf, so I, I appreciate it. Okay, our farmers are important to us, so. <laughs> so um, we're, we're in strong support of this. This is, a, um, this is a request that's come out of a legislative reg resolution that took two years of a, a very collaborative effort by a number of agencies around the state the main recommendation that came out of that resolution was this position here. So we strongly support it. Um, we know where it would fit in the college and we know how it would fit in our current programs and, and would boost the programs that exist. The basic thing here is it's a lot of it is a teacher, a teacher program. So we would be teaching teachers who then could then take this into the classroom. And that's where we think the real benefit, the real uh, sock is gonna come from this in terms of, um, you know, dollar or value for the dollar that's spent. So thank you. I'm here for questions. Thank you. We have Craig Kirai, Department of Budget and Finance with comments. Terry Ushijima from DOE. Let's see her. Um, okay, Brian Miyamoto again. Thank you, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committees, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, we do support Ag education, and thank you, Chair, for hearing this bill. Thank you, Chairs. Uh, we always hear our, our aging farming population, 60 years plus. Uh, ag education is critical. Uh, agriculture education will connect or reconnect our students with agriculture. Our students, our keiki, are going to be the next generation of policymakers and consumers of farmers. So we support uh, many of these ag education bills, but this one in particular, because it does create the, the position, the coordinated position that we think is, is greatly needed. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Kendall Matsuyoshi, Local Food Co Coalition. Uh, good afternoon, Chair good afternoon. Kim, uh, Chair Gabber, Vice Chair uh, Nishihara and Kidani, and members of the committee. Kendall Matsuyoshi on behalf of the Local Food Coalition. Uh, testifying in support of the measure, uh, we echo the comments made by the Hawaii Farm Bureau, and just know that it's important. You know, we think agriculture education across the P20 spectrum is important. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's see, uh, we have a number of people that have sent in testimony. Ten in support, one in opposition. Is there anyone else here wishing to testify on this measure, or anyone on Zoom? Did I miss Lady Burnell? I'm sorry. Lady. Oh. Lindy? Lady. Yes, I'm Lady. here. Lady Thank Bernal. You so Hello, Hello. Sorry, I missed you. No problem. Uh, my name is Lady Bernal, coordinator of the Hawaii Farm to School Hui statewide network with Hawaii Public Health Institute. We strongly support this bill. As uh, Dean Comerford mentioned, it is based on many years of work by many stakeholders. And just wanted to point out that this agriculture education coordinator position at UHCTAR is really critical for our state in that they would work with partners to develop this P20 or preschool through post-secondary preschool to PhD pathway for agriculture and food systems education. And also noting that agriculture education is really integral to the success of the Hawaii Farm to School program in the Department of Education passed by Act of 175 in 2021. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Aloha. Thank you. Again, anyone else wishing to testify in person or on Zoom on this measure? Do I see someone else? I'm sorry, my, my eyes, I don't take my glasses. No? Okay, members, we're open to questions. Anyone, any questions? Hearing no questions, we'll move on to the final item on the agenda, House Bill 2305, House Draft 1. Appropriates funds to the University of Hawaii for the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources to study diseases affecting the production of ornamental red ginger on Oahu and on the neighbor islands. Uh, again, we hear from Department of Agriculture, Morris. Thank you, Chairs. Uh, the department uh, is in strong support of um, any funding for research uh, regarding infectious plant diseases. And, and we will uh, stand on our testimony and be available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dean Comerford. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. This is a particularly interesting bill because it shows um, a strong collaboration between the Department of Agriculture and the college. Both have been working on these diseases, have made some, some progress. 
And what this bill is asking for is help us to continue the research and trying to define the, the, um, the main problems involved and in integrated pest management approach uh, to help solve the problem and make our ginger farmers far more productive. So we're in strong support and uh, standing on our testimony and I am available for questions if you wish. Thank you. Thank you. Craig Hirai, Department of Budget and Finance with comments, Brian Miyamoto. Thank you, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committees. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We, we stand in support of this uh, important measure that assists an important industry within the agricultural sector, our nursery industry. So we do thank the committees for hearing this measure. Uh, as the Dean said, it's been great collaboration. There's been some work done when we first uh, address ornamental red ginger. We weren't sure if it was a virus, if it was bacteria, if it was pest. It appears that it's six viruses and there is continued work that needs to be done, especially on, on additional research, but also protocols. Uh, we believe it's on all islands. It's, it's prevalent here on Oahu and on Hawaii Island, but we believe it's on all islands and it could severely negatively impact our, our ornamental red ginger growers. Um, I, I know of a specific grower that, that used to be at many of our farmers markets here on Oahu when we visited our farm on the windward side and they've stopped growing it. And we visited another farm and they made us do uh, uh, sanitation protocols because they're so concerned about the spread and the impact and uh, the, the first farmer just stopped growing it. And you know it's not that easy to convert to other crops or other plants. So uh, we do ask for continued support and the continued collaboration between the university, between CTAR and the Department of Agriculture. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. We do have 10 others that have submitted written testimony and support. Is there anyone else here uh, wishing to testify in person or anyone on Zoom wishing to testify on this measure? Hearing none, members, we're open to questions. Uh, Madam Chair, can you yes. clarify, Senator, is the on. request for positions or for funding? I believe it's funding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Come, Brian, why don't you come up? I've got to ask you a question anyway. Thank you, Senator Kidani. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it is for funding. Uh, just for no, not positions funding. They, they and it's do only have the a, red ginger that's impacted? We, we believe so. That's that's the only thing. And, and the dean could probably qualify more. But from my understanding, that's the only one right now. We, I don't believe it's in the pink ginger yet. Uh, but we are concerned. Again, we want to control and mitigate this and, and prevent the, the continued spread. Thank you. Do you have an idea how much it would take? Uh, again, the dean probably answered, but I believe it's $120,000 or around that, that range that they were asking for. Okay, one more question. How long have we been studying this? And maybe, Dean, you can jump in on this, but you, you folks mentioned you want the research to continue. So how, much, how long have the research been going on? Dean, do you have uh, that information? I don't have that in, information at hand. In, in the testimony, I have a list of all the types of work that has been done, but I don't have dates with them. I can get that information for you, but it's okay, been on then, uh, at, at least five to seven years, I'm guessing. Okay, I guess, so the next question is how long more you think before we have something definitive or, I mean, oh, oh, I know so, people uh, love to research stuff, but at some point we gotta <laughs> have some <laughs> something to, <laughs> to work yeah, on. Yeah, no, I, I, Senator, I, I feel for the same thing is um, the, the way this, the way it goes, we've been pretty good at identifying what some of the casual agents are. What we need to be doing now is working on two things, uh, what the researchers tell me. One is trying to get um, disease-free material through tissue culture so we can start getting that out. And the second is to develop an integrated pest management program that would, uh, that would alleviate these problems or at least minimize. What you understand is we'll never get rid of diseases, but what we try to do with management is keep the diseases at a low enough level that it's no longer really economically a problem on the, on the plants. And, and that's what we're shooting for. I, I just ha can't tell you um, a, de a deadline on when we get those things done. It really depends on the number of people we have working and, and the, the resources that we have, but still there's nothing that I can give you a definite time on. All I can tell you is we make progress on everything we work on. We made progress on, on CBB. We made, we're making progress on, on coffee, um, coffee leaf. We're making progress on um, two-line spittlebug. 
we're making progress on some of the stuff going on with macadamia nuts. So we're working on a tremendous number of different problems along with PBARC, along with HDOA. And all I can tell you is we will make progress. Our, our Do you know how much we've good. expended so far on this studies? Uh, no, I don't. And I don't think it's, it's a, a particularly a large amount, but I can find that information for you as well. Okay. And you feel $120,000 is going to be what's needed or? It, we're talking about one year of funding. So uh, the scientists tell me, I think it's more on the order of uh, 90 to 100 for the first year. They're looking at trying to do some tissue culture to get virus-free materials. Um, they think that get that out there and then they can do a better job of, of finding how things are spread. Uh, they're also looking at trying to keep working on uh, an integrated pest management approach. Understand. Uh, but it's, it's one year of funding. Senator. Yeah, but it's one year, but if you've already been on five years, so it's, what's the anticipation on how many more years? But I guess that's something that I let yeah, so Madam no, Chair, that was, that was my question. Um, five to seven years or however long you've been working on it, one year of funding of $120,000 is how many bodies, how many scientists or um, ag workers do you have working on this? Yeah, th this would not be, this would not really be paying much in the way of salaries, but tissue culture is expensive. And so probably 50 to $70,000 of that would primarily go going towards tissue culture to get uh, disease-free materials. Um, you know, we, we can only work a year at a time when we work with funding through the legislature. And um, that's just a situation we're working in. We also, at the same time, we do do our best to try to get outside grants uh, the problem is some of our crops simply don't have a national, um, a national footprint. And so mm -hmm. that makes it a little bit more difficult to get things like red ginger funded through uh, USDA NIFA type grants. We do work with Western, Western SARE, but again, Western SARE tends not to focus on the Pacific and on the tropics. We're the only state in the union in the tropics. So that gives us some interesting issues when we go for uh, grants that are specific to the Hawaii condition. Dean, how many bodies are actually working on this red ginger issue? Uh, by my count right now, there's probably two scientists and maybe a graduate student or two. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, members? Hearing no. Sure. Yes. I do have a question. Uh, Senator Rhodes. Just a technical question. On, you know, we are the only tropical state, but Puerto Rico, of course, is quite a lot bigger population-wise. Do, do we not have any... Uh, collaborations with them or do they not share the same kind of uh, uh, infestation problems we have? Uh, no, they, they do share they do share similar problems. Uh, and also the Virgin Islands, both Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico and Hawaii are the, U, are, and well, of course, uh, re the rest of the Pacific too, but those are the ones that are uh, most, most involved. Puerto Rico, we share mainly with coffee in, in terms of collaboration. I am not aware of any work going on in red ginger in Puerto Rico, but, but again, I can check on, on that because that wouldn't necessarily be something that I know. Okay, thanks, Chair. Thank you. Members, final call, any more questions? Hearing none. Okay, we'll go into um, decision-making. Thank you. I'd like to call the joint committees back to order for decision making. Recommendations of the chairs would be on House Bill 1711, House Draft 1, appropriating funds to the University of Hawaii support three additional positions, the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, Kauai Research and Extension Station. Recommendation is to pass that is, but to put into the committee report for the next committee on determining whether or not it's actual positions that need to be created or it's um, just funding existing positions, lifting any kind of um, um, freeze or a combination of both. So, um, but pass as is, so is a discussion. Any discussion members? If not, the uh, uh, vice chair, chair votes aye. House bill 1711 HD1 to pass unamended. Chair votes aye, vice chair votes aye. Senator Keith Algaran. Aye. Senator Wakai. Excuse, Senator Favela. Aye. 
Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Acasio. Aye. Senator Rose. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Thank you. Okay, for the next item, Senate. Um, Senate House Bill 1717, House Draft 1. This is the funds for the University of Hawaii to establish a foreign agriculture small equipment pilot program. The uh, consensus of the chairs is that we defer this measure, that we ask that the um, agriculture community and working with CTAR for, to go ahead and create some kind of a working group, contact your farmers, get some idea and what it is that they actually would like to have and then collaborate on it and then come back to us and then we might be ready to go ahead and fund something. Okay, any any questions on that members or any discussion? Hearing none, items deferred. The next item, House Bill 1844, House Draft 2. This is for the Tropical Agriculture Human Resources to establish one full-time agricultural education coordinator position in, for the University of Hawaii. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Any discussion? Hearing none, Vice Chair, Chair votes on. House Bill 1844, HD2, pass unamended. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Keith Algaran. Aye. Senator Wakai, excuse Senator Favela. Aye. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair. The members present any voting with opposition or reservation, saying on motions adopted. Thank you, members. Thank you. Final item, House Bill 2305, House Draft 1. This is for funds for the University of Hawaii Tropical Agriculture and Human Resource to study the disease affecting the production of ornamental red ginger on Oahu and neighbor islands. Recommendation is to pass as is. I'm waiting for a vote sheet, Madam Chair. Okay. Any discussion while we're waiting for that vote sheet? Okay, if not, the chair votes aye. Is this to pass, pass as is? Pass, pass as is. Chair votes aye. This is for House Bill 2305 HD 1. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Keith Algaran. Aye. Senator Wakai. Excuse Senator Favela. Reservation. Reservation. Measures adopted, Madam Chair. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair. Members present. Any voting with reservations, reservations. or opposition? Reservations. 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 Okay, with that, I believe we are at the end of the agenda. We are adjourned. The joint committees are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Prior to the guest, you have a Let me pass it down. You can use that one. Okay. And I'll give it back. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, I call the joint committee to order. You're the lead. You're the lead. 145. Oh, I guess I am. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, calling into order the uh, Committee on Public Safety and Agriculture for the Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022, hearing at 145, room 224. I have to go to an explain. Yeah, you're kind of supposed to. No. No, that's what I'm looking for. The script. Yeah, just tell them that okay. it's being broadcast. Yeah. If, if it's okay, this, uh, this hearing is being uh, aired as well on the Zoom on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Oh, YouTube. I'm sorry. Thank you. YouTube. 
Okay, uh, in the event uh, that we have to uh, run out of time, which I don't think we will, there's only one bill, uh, we would move it to, uh, I think, Thursday. It's a deadline day, so. Oh. Okay. No, yeah. Well, I guess there is no other date. This is it. <laughs> we might have to recess for a bit. It's either this or it dies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, in the event that uh, you know, if your uh, your names are called uh, and we uh, either mispronounce your name or don't adequately uh, have it uh, printed out uh, uh, accurately, we apologize. But the uh, list of testifiers will be also uh, available through the website. That is, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, and if the, if the caps, closed captioning doesn't accurately transcribe the names um, and if you want to review the written testimony, go to the legislature's website on the status page. Uh, so, in the event that we have to move on, if your name is called and not available, we will move on to the next person and try to come back to you. Okay? I think that pretty much sums it up. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so the first testifier is uh, Luke Myers for Hyema. Good afternoon, uh, chairs, uh, vice chairs. Uh, my name is uh, Luke Myers. I'm the administrator of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. IEMA stands on our written testimony in support of House Bill 2120 and are available for discussion if necessary. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you. Is Stephanie Easley here? Yes, yeah, thank you. I know you've been waiting all this time. Come on, come for it. Oh, yes, please. Sorry. Good afternoon, sir. Good Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of HB 2021 today. My name is Stephanie Easley. I'm a legal fellow for CGAPS, the coordinating group on alien pest species. We strongly support the amendments made by HB 2021 that permit Hawaii's emergency authorities to be available to respond to climate and environmental impacts. Climate and invasive species are two threats to Hawaii that interact with each other. We believe in the future there could be an invasive species that poses such a high risk to Hawaii that responding with the emergency authorities would be the appropriate response. As we put in our written testimony, the hypothetical example is the stony coral tissue loss disease that's currently impacting Florida and the Caribbean. Um, it's a devastating coral killing disease it spread, it was detected in 2014. It spread over hundreds of miles of Florida coastline to the Caribbean. If it were to be detected here, CGAPS would want to have every authority available to the state to craft its response. And the amendments made in this bill would permit that. We ask that the committee consider clarifying that the authorities um, made available here could be used to respond to a particularly high risk invasive species. Um, Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I'm here for any questions. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. If there's anybody out there uh, on Zoom that like to testify on this measure that hasn't been listed, not any in the audience who are presently here would like to testify on this bill. Not. Thank you. Members, any questions? Okay. Yes, we're going to research on this question. Okay. Can you think of it uh, to research? Thank you. Okay, we're calling back into session the uh, hearing of uh, agriculture and public safety for Wednesday, March 23, 22, 145. And uh, the committees have confirmed, conferred 
And these are the recommendations to pass it with the technical amendments. Any questions? No. Just name the Senate, name the House bill for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. The House bill is House Bill 2120, House Draft 1. And the recommendations, as I said earlier, it's to pass it with technical amendments for consistency. Okay. okay. I guess we're ready for the vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. So pass with amendments, uh, Chair Gozai. Members voting on HB 2120 with uh, HD1, passing with amendments, Chair's recommendation. Uh, Senator Nishihara goes aye. Senator Decoit, aye. Senator Baker, aye. Senator Rivera, aye. Senator Favela, aye. Chair recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Same recommendation for ADN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair, aye. And uh, changing hats. Uh, Senator Acasio. Aye. Senator Rose. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Motions adopted. Thank you, members. Okay, we're adjourned. Thanks, Clarence. Hello, Mike Ako, and calling to order. It's Wednesday, March 23rd, uh, 2022, and it's the 1.50 p.m. Welcome to the AEN Water Land uh, Committee hearing here in 224 and video conferencing, which includes the audio and video of remote participants that's being streamed live on YouTube. I'm Mike Gabbard, Chair of the AEN Committee. My members joining me today are Senator Favela, Senator Ocasio, uh, Senator Nishikara. Yes, uh, committee members for water and land. Uh, myself is chair, vice chair Agaran is here. Senator Ms. Salucha is here present. We have Senator uh, Favela and Senator Rivier. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. we're, we got quorum, ma'am, right. uh, chair. So you'll find the links to viewing options for all the Senate hearing meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website at capital.hawaii.gov. For the Zoomers, uh, testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. And if there are any technical glitches during your turn to testify, Zoom, we have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee has your written testimony. And because of our 90 minute time limit for each of the hearings, uh, there will be a two minute time limit for all testifiers. And we'll have a virtual countdown timer on the Zoom screen. So please be aware of the timer. I'll be announcing the testifiers who will be providing testimony via Zoom and in person. And for the complete list of testifiers, along with all the written testimony, please go to the legislature's website. And we apologize if the closed caption does not accurately describe the names. Okay, so we'll start off with the uh, first measure is House Bill 2084 HD3 uh, relating to important ag lands, allows landowners and lessees of important ag lands to apply to the counties to develop, construct, and maintain farm cluster housing on the lands for rent to farmers and farm employees who actively and currently farm on the land subject to certain exemptions, removes restrictions on farm dwellings, on important ag lands that are stricter than that for farm dwellings within ag districts. First to testify is Ryan Miyamoto from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Chair Inouye, Vice Chair Nishihara, members of the committee. Um, Ryan Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll stand on a written testimony in support, but if I could just add, um, we believe this bill will clarify the legislative intent of the IAL 
farm worker housing tax credit. We went through some uh, uh, on uh, City and County of Honolulu had submitted their maps for the IL designation here on Oahu, and some of the farmers were concerned that the IL housing provision may be more restrictive than what's currently allowed in Chapter 205, 4.5. So we believe that this clarifies that it's not more restrictive than uh, what is currently in uh, Chapter 205. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Brian. Next is Department of Ag. Aloha, Chair Zinoe and Gabbard uh, and committee members. Uh, Morris Sata on behalf of the Department of Agriculture. Uh, we will stand on our testimony, but uh, just want to state that we support this measure and we defer to the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development regarding the county exemptions that are contained in the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Morris. Next is Ruby Edwards from the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Good afternoon, chairs and vice chairs and members of the committees. Um, I'm actually testifying on behalf of both the director of the DBED, of DBED as well as um, the Office of Planning and Sustainable, Sustainable Development. Again, my name is Ruby Edwards. We stand on a written testimony in support of the measure. I'd just like to take a, a moment to clarify why we are requesting the exemption, uh, the removal of the language in subsection F. And in part, it's to clarify the misunderstanding. This, this proposal would be more restrictive, but it, is, but it does not replace or um, prohibit the use of other less restrictive um, permitting processes and subdivision applications that are, exist under uh, current county ordinances. So again, it is an additional and optional tool that helps to try and preserve the original intent of the legislation back in 2008 to provide a state incentive for the um, for the designation of IEL. We believe that this measure, if adopted, would actually promote more significant um, cost relief and savings for the construction of housing. Uh, affordable farm dwellings to IEL landowners and farmers. And we also believe that it would preserve more land area than un allowed under current county ordinances. Um, we would, it would preserve more land area for protective farmland. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Ruby. J. Rick Medeiros Garcia. Opposition. Anyone else wanting to testify either in Zoom or in person? Members, any questions? Okay, I'll turn it over to you, Senator Inouye. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> we'll continue on then to the notice of hearing on the second item, HB 1658 House Draft 1. And this is relating to the transfer of non-agriculture park lands. Uh, before the transfer of non-ag parklands, it authorizes Department of Ag to request information from the Department of Land and Natural Resources related to the establishment of necessary and reasonable e easements upon uh, the lands. I'm going to call for a short recess, please. Thank you. The uh, com joint committees are going back into HB 1658, House Draft 1. <clears throat> DLNR, Russell Tsuji, or any member? I see Kevin Moore there. Kevin? Hi, uh, good afternoon. DLNR. Hi, good afternoon, uh, Chairs, Vice Chairs, Committee members. Kevin Moore with Land Division. So on the House Draft 1, uh, the department supports this measure and provides comments and we'll, we'll stand on our written testimony submitted. Okay. Uh, thank you, DLNR. And just want to alert you as well, there is a SD1 floating uh, as well before this committee and your testimony may be on the HD 
just to alert you, we will be notifying what the SD1 is all about okay. at the end of decision making. Thank you. Thank you so much. A Department of Ag, similarly as well, there is an SD1 being floated. Uh, we will uh, um, make claim during the decision making uh, and proceed, please. Thanks, Morris. Thank you, Chair Zinoy and Gabbard. Uh, the department, Marsata, on behalf of the department, the department will stand on its testimony uh, supporting the measure. And we just, we just want to note that um, through the existing uh, current transfer process that we've been engaged in with DLNR, we do vet these issues and we do try to address any necessary easements or other conditions of transfer that uh, would be appropriate. So uh, just wanted to make that comment that, that it exists in our current process. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Department of Ag. Uh, we do have the uh, Local Food Coalition, please. Candle Mat Matsuyoshi as well. Aloha. Thank you for your patience. Uh, yeah. Aloha, Chair Zinoy, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Keith Agran, and Vice Chair Nishihara, and members of the committees. Candle Matsuyoshi on behalf of the Local Food Coalition. Uh, we'll stand on our written testimony and support. I just need to comment that we prefer SB 2068 SD2, which we believe is a more comprehensive solution to this measure. And just like to thank again the Act 90 Working Group for all this work during the interim to address this issue of the Act 99 transfers. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. And members, he's referring then to our Senate version that was pressed previously, and that will be our SD1 as he refers to. Uh, Cattlemen's Association or C Cattlemen's Council, Nicole Galassi, please. And if you can summarize, we'd appreciate okay. it. Thank you, Chair Zinoy and Gabbard, Vice Chairs Keith Agaran and Nishihara, members of the committees. We do support this measure with comments because it is only a piece of what could help facilitate the transfer of lands from DLNR to DOA. Um, and as stated, DOA already has the, the ability to inquire about these easements. We just ask that the easements be um, those that are granted that are not negatively impacting to agricultural production. Um, thank you, Nicole. Well. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ulupono Initiative, Amaika Munikata, Good afternoon. Aloha. Good afternoon, Chair Noy, Vice Chair Keith Agaran, Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Nishihara, Michael Munikata here on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative. We'll stand on our testimony offering comments and, and just echoing a lot of, of what others have said around this is actually already being done. And looking forward to, to seeing the SD1 that, that really reflects the SB 2060 SD2, which we are in strong support of. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Micah. We did have received uh, testimonies in this measure. There were nine in support, opposition none, and comments uh, for uh, members. Any questions you'd like to ask? Otherwise, if you'll bear with us, let's proceed then with HB 1768, House Draft 2. And this is relating to the disposition of uh, water rights uh, as well. And for those testifying, just to be aware, we do have an SD1, which includes the Senate version. Uh, that will be the Senate District uh, Senate SD1 uh, that we'll be replacing. Uh, your testimony, please, DHHL. Aloha. Aloha, Chair um, Inouye and Chair Gabbard and members of the committee. We stand in support of um, HB 1768 HD 2S and the proposed SD1. Thank you very much. Okay, mahalo. Uh, Dr. Uh, oh, aloha, Councilman uh, Huleko Goro Inaba. Welcome. Aloha, awina la kako, may kaaino o kona mai. Good afternoon from the warm lands of Kona. Uh, here testifying in support of this measure, I have provided written testimony and I uh, have tracked this bill across the session. And, you know, it, it's a sensible, fair, and just bill. And I want to mahalo uh, Kahuliao, uh, Ms. Broad, and Ms. Uh, Tanigao Lam for their work on this bill, not only in uh, bringing together advocates from the Richardson School of Law, but also our lovely across the Pai Aina. So ask you to continue supporting this bill so that we can see it through the end of the session. Mahalanui. Okay, so just for clarification, um, Goro, then we're talking about your support for the Senate version then. Um, House bill, the, the measure on the floor right now. So With the SD1. Okay, yes. mahalo. All mahalo. right. Okay, Ahumoku Lemana Demati. And if you can summarize as well, please. And sorry, folks, we're on a time schedule here. 
we don't want any bills to die. Thank you, Chair. And um, aloha, Chair Gabbard, Chair Inoue, and Vice Chairs and members of the committee. Ahamoku uh, stands in support of this um, House Bill 1768, but we would like the Senate version to be, make sure that it's integrated into this the yeah. Senate version. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mahalo. Okay. Uh, Earth Justice, Isaac Moriwaki. Aloha, Chair. Aloha, Vice Isaac. Chairs. I, uh, Isaac Moriwaki, Earth Justice, stand on our testimony in support uh, in integrating the Senate amendments. Mahalo. Okay, mahalo uh, as well. Joanne Kaona. Kaona. Aloha. Hello, Senators. My name is Joanne Kaona. I am the Secretary for the Waioli Valley Terahui, and I help my dad farm Kalo. I testified before you guys last month on the Senate companion of this bill, and I'm here to ask that you please support HB 1768. Um, you've, as you heard, our hui has been in the extremely complicated process of obtaining a water lease for the last couple of years. Uh, we couldn't have gotten this far without Kapus Road and Ui Tanigao Lam mm -hmm. and their entire team of students and colleagues. And we've done all the necessary compliance work that's been asked of us, but we still don't have a water lease. That's why this bill is important. We just want to farm. We want to continue to perpetuate this cultural practice and continue to feed our community. So okay. mahalo, mahalo, please support this bill. Mahalo. Mahalo. Okay, Chris Kobayashi. Aloha. Aloha. Um, aloha, Senators. Mahalo for this opportunity. Oh, wait. Start my video. There we go. Sorry. Yeah, aloha. we can hear you. Continue. Okay. Aloha. Mahalo for this opportunity. My name is Chris Kobayashi. I farm Kalo in Waioli with my partner, Demi Rivera. I live and work on the same farm where I was born and raised and the same place that my dad and grandfather lived and farmed from over 100 years ago. You have my written testimony and I also testified before your committees last month on the Senate companion. But I'm here today to let you know how important it, this bill is to the future of Kalo farming, especially in Waioli Valley. Joanne testified earlier and she is only one of a small handful of folks from the next generation to carry on this important cultural practice and people talk a lot about food sustainability and growing our own food but that cannot happen unless our local farmers are truly supported so that we can feed our communities kalo poi kulolo and more so please pass this bill i want to say mahalo thank you for this opportunity and especially to senator inoi mahalo mahalo chris aloha oilani long Aloha, aloha my co-chairs, vice chairs, and committee members. As many of you already know, my name is Ui Tanigawa Lam, and I'm an attorney, and I work with um, the Waioli Valley Tarahui and at the law school teaching Native Hawaiian environmental law clinics. Um, mahalo nui for this opportunity to testify in strong support. This bill would provide much needed justice and kokua for hardworking kalo farmers like the hui. It also provides overdue support to our traditional and customary practices. And as I've mentioned in the past, our final EA confirms significant environmental benefits. That said, I respectfully ask for you to um, pass this bill today. Mahalo nui. Okay. Aloha, thank you very much. Members, we have 51 in support of this measure. One opposition and no comments. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, anyone, did I leave somebody out? Aloha, um, Chair, I was... Um, I'm Kapua Sprout, but I'm here to testify on behalf of the Waioli Valley. Oh, Valley. yes, yes, Kapua. Mahalo. I'll just summarize very quickly. I know you folks are in a rush. Um, we testified on this matter before. You have the written testimony of our farmers, but I have just one point that I would like to make. This bill is incredibly significant and needs to be passed this session, please. Kala cultivation is one of Hawaii's most important cultural practices. It defines who we are as Native Hawaiians and as a larger community. Many of us love to eat kalo and poi and rely, we rely on farmers like those from the Waioli Valley Tarahui to feed us. It's even more important today given the war and the, and the threats to our global supply chains. And over the last three years, these farmers have complied with nearly all of 171's many requirements. Please pass this bill and allow them to focus their time, energy and resources on their lo'i and feeding their community instead of scaling more legal hurdles. Mahalo. Yeah. Just to confirm you're supporting the SD1, Yes, the Hui does support that. The Senate version. Yes. Thank you. Mahalo. Okay. Um, members, any questions? 
Okay, then uh, hearing none, uh, let's com uh, continue on to the last uh, item, HB 1872, House Draft 1. And this is retaining, uh, relating to sustainability. Uh, this requires the DLNR to recognize that game mammals and game birds provide a food source and that striking an appropriate balance between the management of game mammal and game bird populations and sustainability. DLNR. Aloha, chairs and vice Aloha. chair and members of the committee. My name is Afshin Siddiqui with the Department of Land and Natural Resources, and we stand in our on our testimony and support. Okay. Mahalo, thank you very much. Um, Hawaii Farm Bureau, Brian. Thank you, Chair Noy. Chair Gabbard, Vice Chair Keith Agaron, Vice Chair Nishar, members of the committee, Brian Mimo here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, the Hawaii Farm Bureau supports the intent of this measure. Uh, we do request that um, agriculture is also considered and uh, minimal impact to agriculture like in environment like it currently is in the bill um, in regards to game animal management. So we are just considering, we do have a simple amendment that we did provide in our testimony. Thank you for the opportunity yeah. to testify. Mahalo. Um, we do have Clayton Kubo or Brian Lay. Um, Brian, if Clayton is with GMAC as well, if you can summarize, um, we are time constrained today. We must pass our bill. So please uh, cooperate. Um, so Brian, because you're GMAC and the author of this uh, bill as well, proceed. You, you gotta unmute yourself. Okay, I'm you. Uh, Brian County GMAC, uh, Vice Chair, we're uh, strongly in support of uh, HB 1872, like, and we stand on our written testimony, and uh, Abraham and I talking to the members last week, and also we would like to see the amendment that the DLNR put on, and we go back to the original wording on HB 1872. Mahalo for your support and your understanding. Okay, mahalo, um, Brian, as well. Clayton, oh, are you on? Yes, Chair. Clayton. Yes. I'm not with GMAC. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Clayton, please support. Okay, Clayton, uh, your, Clayton your testimony. Uh, support, please support this measure. As you guys can see, I am hunting right now for sustainability. Mahalo nui, aloha. Okay, good luck, be safe. Mahalo. Uh, members for this measure, we have 17 in support, uh, one opposition and no comments. Uh, members, uh, any uh, any questions or comments on this particular measure? Okay, Chair, shall we proceed and we'll go into recess? Sure. Okay. Um, IT committees will go into recess for decision-making. Okay, coming back from recess on the decision making uh, for the 150 uh, joint agenda with AEN and Waterland, starting off with House Bill 2084 HD3, having conferred. Uh, the chair's recommendation would be to pass with the amendments that were offered by the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, as well as the Department of Ag. And basically, it's the deletion of the exemption in subsection F on page seven of the HD3. Discussion? No. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair? Yes, with reservations. Senator Rose? Aye. Senator Cavella? Aye. Motions adopted. Thank you, members. Okay, the Committee on Water and Land, same recommendation to pass HB 2084, House Draft 2, with amendments. Any discussions for water land? Hearing none. Um, Chair's recommendation uh, then is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Yeah, you meant HD3, right? Right. HD3, sorry about that. Okay. Chair voted aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Salute, Chair. Aye. Senator Revere. Aye. Senator Bella, you voting no? 
Okay. Uh, moving on then, uh, next item on the agenda, HB 1658 House Draft 1, and this is uh, transferring non-ag parklands. Uh, both chairs' recommendations is to pass with the amendments, uh, and members, you did hear, we've visited with this measure before uh, in a Senate draft, uh, and I'll just summarize, we're amending section one uh, and this amended uh, purpose. We're amending uh, uh, on item two, the HRS requiring DOA to accept the transfer of and manage certain qualifying unencumbered non-conservation, non-agriculture parklands, including pasture leases. We're providing the designated conservation lands not in current agriculture use, remain under DLNR, uh, further, we're requiring DOA prior to offering a lease to inquire that DLNR regarding any easements required for access to landlocked forest reserves or other assets on land subject to the lease will be requiring a lessee to develop a conservation program and plan if conservation resources exist on the land. We will be requiring approval from BLNR and BOA before removing pasture lands for reforestation or other public purposes. Of course, we're adding a savings clause. We'll be making technical non-substantive amendments to the purposes for clarity and consistency, similarly to our Senate version. Any discussions? Hearing none, um, you're okay? You're okay? Yeah. All right, uh, for the water and land, uh, chair's recommendation is to pass HB 1658 with amendments. Any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair, uh, for the vote, Chair goes aye. We have five members present. Any reservations? Reservations. Any opposition? Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye, Vice Chair. Okay, are the members present? Um, any voting with um, reservations? Or reservations. reservations. Thank you. Which is enough. Uh, thank you. HB 1768 House Draft 2, and this is relating to the disposition of water rights, and this is water rights, Kalo farming, the exemptions. Members will be passing this with the amendments. We've heard this in the Senate's version. We're adopting the proposed SD1, and the amendments are uh, exempting the in-stream use of water for a traditional and customary Kalo cultivation practices, from the existing process for disposition of water rights. We'll be clarifying that the powers and duties of the Commission on Water Resource Management shall include determining appurtenant water rights, including but not limited to the qualification of the amount of water the and the specification of the water course or the means of access and delivery entitled to, but that right. Uh, third, we'll be clarifying that nothing in Chapter 174C, Part 4, uh, sorry, yes, Part 4, Hawaii HRS shall be construed to deny the exercise of an appurtenant right, including the use, access, deliver, and quality of water by the holder thereof at any time. We'll be clarifying that the appurtenant water rights of Kuleana and Taro lands along with those traditional and customary rights assured under Native Hawaiian water rights, including but not limited to the rights of use, access, delivery, and quality of water shall not be diminished or extinguished by failure to apply for or to receive a permit. Uh, we'll be including the severability clause. We'll amending section one to reflect its amended purpose and making technical non substantive and amendments for purposes of clarity's consistency and style. Any discussions? Members, okay with AEN? Yeah. All right. Um, Chair's recommendation then uh, for Waterland to pass HB 1768 uh, as proposed as the one uh, as well. Chair votes aye. Okay, with five members present, any reservations? Any opposition? Recommendation adopted. Same recommendation for AEN discussion. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair. We have the five members present. Any voting with opposition or reservation? Seeing none, motions adopted. 
Thank you, members. HB 1874, except 1872, House Draft 1, relating to sustainability. Chair's recommendation uh, is to pass with these amendments. Uh, on page 1, line 12, we'll be removing the word can, uh, C-A-N. On um, page 1, line 16, page 2, lines 1 to 2, we'll be removing, providing that adverse effects to the environment are sufficiently minimizes or offset through native ecosystem protections. Any discussions? For Committee on Water and Land, um, Chair's recommendation then is to pass HB 1872 House Draft 1 with an SD1. Chair votes aye. Okay, with five members present, any reservations? Reservation. Reservation. Any opposition? The recommendation adopted. Thank you. Same rec recommendation for AEN. Discussion? Chair votes aye. Five members present. Any voting with opposition or reservation? Reservation. Okay, thank you. Motion is adopted. Okay. Mahalo. That's it. Okay, this concludes the water and land and the committee on agriculture. Going to order the uh, 2 p.m. March 23rd AEN uh, slash ET decision making on one item HB 2399 HD1 uh, relating to waste management. Establishes uh, an extended producer responsibility program requiring Certain producers of fast moving consumer uh, goods to register with uh, DOH and pay an annual fee based on the amount of packaging volume the covered producer places on the market each calendar year. Provides for deposit fees into an extended producer responsibility special fund. Provides for the expenditure of monies from the extended producer responsibility special fund for the creation of a report that assesses the resources needed to reduce the volume of packaging waste sent to landfills or power plants that burn municipal solid waste. Okay, so uh, members, the chair's recommendation, uh, this extended producer responsibility or EPR, it's a concept uh, in my view whose time has come. It's basically having producers pay a share of the waste handling costs for the gazillions of products <laughs> that are in the marketplace instead of the consumers paying all of them. Uh, for it all. So it's the chair's view that this bill needs further discussion. So in order to keep it alive, the recommendation would be to pass with an amendment that was offered by Lauren Zerbel representing the Consumer Healthcare Products Association. Uh, they claim that CHPA claims that because of a possible conflict between state and federal law, that an exemption is needed. So that exemption would read, and I quote, any material that is used in the packaging of a product that is regulated as a drug, medical device, or dietary supplement by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act 21, U.S.C. 321, et sec, section 3.2E of 21 U.S. Code of Federal Regulations or the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act is exempt, unquote. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Vice Chair? Okay. Of the five members present, any voting with opposition or again, you know, reservation. Reservation. Any others? Okay. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Thank you, members. That concludes the. Thank you, members.